35, heavy light, turn on my 25, left back to line. Number two, following Tempe, heavy airbus three, a mile farm. Okay, number two. What's going on guys, Flyby Simulations here, and welcome to the 7th episode in the full flight portion of this aircraft's dissected series, where we delve into every single switch, knob, and display in the flight deck of the Zebo Mod Boeing 737-800. So, in the previous episode, we covered the taxi and takeoff procedure, and in this episode, the main highlights, as you can probably tell from the title and thumbnail of this video, are going to be the climb and cruise phases of flight from San Francisco to LA. Once again, sorry for the delay between episodes, the new academic year has now begun for me and managing university work as well as YouTube can get hard sometimes. However, the good news is that I have the next two episodes after this one already scripted and planned out, so they should be coming out right on schedule. Anyways, with all of that aside, let's jump into the flight deck and get started. Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome yet again to the flight deck of the Zebo 737-800. And as you can see, the simulator is currently in a paused state, as I want to properly walk you guys through the flap retraction procedure, as well as a few other actions to perform right after takeoff. So, speaking of flap retraction, the area where pilots would be able to get an indication as to when to retract the flaps would again be on the PFD, or primary flight display. In essence, the general guidelines for flap retraction dictate that you must not retract the flaps unless you're at or above a speed, which is your V2 speed, in our case 146 knots, plus 15 to 20 knots. This means that we shouldn't retract any level of flaps until reaching at least 161 to 166 knots in our case. Additionally, another rule also dictates that you must not retract the flaps before reaching 1000 feet AGL, or above ground level. Note that this is different from 1000 feet above sea level, as some airports may be located at high terrain environments and the ground proximity is what matters in this case. Luckily, you can simply look at this radio altimeter indication right in the middle of the PFD to get an accurate indication of what your exact altitude is above the ground level. Okay, so coming to some actual flap indications, I would like to bring your attention to these green markers on this speed tape over here. As you can see, we currently have two of them, with one reading 1 and the other at a slightly higher speed reading up. These indicate the safe flap retraction speeds for our flight specifically, which are calculated by the aircraft in order to facilitate a smooth climb out of the departure airport. Essentially, pilots are allowed to retract the flaps to the specific degree mentioned on the speed tape when they are within 20 knots of that speed. So for our example here, our takeoff flap position was 5 degrees. So according to our speed tape, we are allowed to retract the flaps 2 notches up to this 1 position as long as we are at or within 20 knots of this speed right here. The same goes for this up indication. We are allowed to retract the flaps completely while we are at or within 20 knots of this speed right here. Now in real life, with a low flap departure like we had with only 5 degrees of flaps extended, Pilots would normally not retract the flaps in stages, and will just fully retract them when they get close enough to the full up flap retraction speed. So, abiding by procedure, we will be doing the same thing. As we get close enough, namely within 5 to 10 knots of the green up indication on the speed tape, we will go ahead and retract the flaps completely. And that's that for the flap retraction procedure. Next up, the final thing I want to mention before resuming our flight is our altitude display on the MCP panel. As you may remember from episode 11 of this series, our initial altitude for this departure was going to be 3000 feet, which is what we have set in the altitude display on the MCP right here. So if we get to 3000 feet, regardless of our final cruising altitude or the various speed and altitude constraints programmed into the FMC for our route, the aircraft will stop its climb and maintain 3,000 feet, since that's a hard constraint we as pilots have programmed into the MCP. Now if you're flying with ATC, then yes, it's perfectly okay to level out at 3,000 feet because the controllers know what they're doing when regulating traffic both laterally as well as vertically and will eventually clear you to climb to a higher altitude. However, in our case, since we're flying without ATC, there's no need to level out at 3,000 feet, and we can continue climbing up to eventually reach our cruising altitude of 35,000 feet. However, realistically, if we were flying with ATC, we wouldn't be immediately clear to our cruising altitude. 
They will keep giving us higher altitudes as we climb and we'll eventually get to flight level 350. So we'll do the same. We'll increase the altitude on this display up to 10,000 feet, then up to 18,000 feet, which if you guys remember is our transition altitude, and finally we'll bring it up all the way to 35,000 feet, so as to simulate a proper climb procedure if ATC were indeed controlling this airspace. So just as a recap, as soon as we resume our simulation right here, I'm going to increase the altitude on this MCP up to 10,000 feet, and I'm also going to keep a close eye on the green flap retraction indications on the PFD, and will retract the flaps accordingly. Make sense? All right, let's resume the simulation. Alright, as you can see, the aircraft is trying to maintain 230 knots, and on this ND, we have our initial turn towards the port waypoint. So I'll shut up and let you guys enjoy the turn from a wing view perspective before moving on to the after takeoff procedure. Alright, so hope you guys enjoyed that beautiful left turn straight after departure. So next up, as you can see, we're getting to 10,000 feet pretty quickly. Hence, we'll go ahead and dial in the next checkpoint altitude into the altitude display on the MCP, which was 18,000 feet, as mentioned before. Another universal aviation rule that I would like to point out here is the hardest speed constraint below 10,000 feet, which is 250 knots. So always remember that your aircraft must be at or below 250 knots below 10,000 feet. As you can see, we're nicely maintaining speed on our PFD. So let's get into the after takeoff procedure. All right, so as you can see, when we get to 10,000 feet, the aircraft automatically pitches down and decreases its vertical speed to be able to slow down its climb. The aircraft does this in order to start increasing its speed because now that it's above 10,000 feet, the 250 knots speed constraint no longer applies, and it can begin speeding up to eventually get to its cruise speed. This is all done automatically, as programmed within the FMC on the ground and the VNAV or vertical navigation mode correctly plots out a vertical profile for the aircraft during the climb. All you have to do is to monitor these parameters and make sure that nothing is going wrong. So, as we hit 10,000 feet, there are a couple of actions we need to perform within the flight deck. The first thing to do is to turn off all the landing lights, so simply come up to the forward overhead panel and turn off both the fixed and retractable landing lights. Additionally, if you had the logo or wing lights on for departure, you would also turn them off now. Next up, at this point, we can also come over to the seatbelt sign switch and turn it to auto so that the aircraft will automatically turn the seatbelt signs in the passenger cabins on or off depending on the phase of flight. Next up, we're simply going to wait to get to our next altitude checkpoint of 18,000 feet.
Okay, so the first thing we're going to check are the engine bleed switches and the packs, which should be set to the on position and the auto position on the forward overhead panel respectively. Next up, we're going to switch the engine start switches back to the auto position from the continuous position, as we don't have harsh weather near our vicinity at the moment. Note that if you had visible moisture, heavy precipitation, at high flight levels, then you can continue leaving these switches to the continuous mode until reaching a safe altitude above the poor weather. Finally, coming down to these forward panels, turn the auto brake switch to the off position from the RTO position, as we have successfully taken off without needing to reject the takeoff. Additionally, we're also going to move the main landing gear lever to the middle off position which, if you remember from episode 6 of this series, will depressurize the hydraulics holding the gear up in the wheel well bay. And that's that for the after takeoff procedure before reaching 10,000 feet. So, as we approach 18,000 feet, we will again go ahead and increase the altitude on our altitude display on this MCP all the way up to 35,000 feet. So, since we know that we're getting to our transition altitude, we're going to have to switch to the standard altimeter setting of 29.92 inches of mercury, or 1013 hectopascals. Now, if you guys want a detailed explanation of what an altimeter setting is, go ahead and watch the third episode in this series, where I explain barometric pressure as well as altimeter setting in detail. So, simply come down to this right knob on this EFIS panel, and press on this middle STD button, which will standardize the altimeter setting. Additionally, now that we're safely climbing to our cruising altitude, we no longer need to have the minimums for the decision height for our departure runway at San Francisco. So simply come over to this knob on the left here, and press this middle reset button, which will reset the 313 feet to decision height we had inputted previously. With that all done, let's continue climbing to 35,000 feet. Okay, as we climb to 18,000 feet, Another action that you guys can perform, which is a good habit to keep in mind, is to always keep this heading bug synced with the actual track the aircraft is flying at all times. Currently, the aircraft is following the LNAV path, which is allowing the onboard flight computers to direct the aircraft from waypoint to waypoint on its programmed lateral route. Hence, this number doesn't really matter too much at the moment. However, in the event that ATC vectors us to fly in a particular direction, which can happen relatively fast, you would quickly have to press this heading select button and turn this knob to the specific heading ATC instructs you to fly to. Now if you keep this display at any random number, the moment you press this heading select button, the aircraft will immediately turn to that random direction. Hence, it's a good habit to keep this number as well as the pink dotted heading line on the ND synced with the current track of the aircraft as that will prevent the aircraft from turning to a random direction and will allow pilots to smoothly transition between the LNAV and manual heading adjustment modes. Hope that makes sense. Alright ladies and gentlemen, as we continue our climb towards 35,000 feet, I'd like to bring your attention to a couple other things around the cockpit that will help you contextualize the climb and cruise phase of flight. First up, I'd like to bring your attention to this T slash C indication over here on the ND. Now from previous episodes in this series, you might remember that TC or TOC stands for top of climb, which is the point at which we reach our cruising altitude, in our case 35,000 feet. Now though this TOC indication is good and provides a decent visual representation of the beginning of our cruise. For more specific information regarding our estimated time en route or ETE at different waypoints, as well as fuel burn estimates and such, I would like to introduce you to a new page on the CDU, namely the progress page. So simply come down to the CDU, and as you can see, there is a clearly labeled button here that reads PROG, so go ahead and click it. That then brings us to the official progress page of the aircraft where we see some useful information pertaining to our lateral and vertical flight path on our route today. At the top, we have the last waypoint we crossed, including the altitude at which we crossed it as well as the fuel quantity in the aircraft at the time we crossed it. Underneath that waypoint, we have the next two waypoints on the route, as well as the distance of those waypoints from our main reference waypoint over here. Again, you have the fuel quantities that you expect given current fuel burn calculations at various waypoints, as well as the ETEs for those waypoints in Zulu time, or UTC. 
Now the specific indication uh, we want to take a look at is this 2T slash C indication at the bottom left here, which shows the distance between the aircraft and the predicted top of climb point at any time in nautical miles. Additionally, we also see our time of arrival in Zulu time, as well as the aircraft's fuel quantity when we reach it. Now the reason why I wanted to introduce you guys to this page now is because it becomes very useful for descent planning. As we reach the top of climb point in our route, this indication turns from showing us our distance to the top of climb to the top of descent instead. Hence, we can then calculate when to put a lower altitude in the altitude display on the MCP, when to select flaps and reference speeds for arrival, and also adjust our auto brake setting depending on the descent stage. More on that in the next episode of the series, where we cover the descent and approach phase in detail. Additionally, I should also mention that there are more options under this progress page, but since this is just a standard point-to-point -point flight, I'm only covering the basics. If you want a more detailed tutorial on this FMC, make sure to leave me a comment down below letting me know and I would be happy to oblige and make an episode like that for you. Anyways, with that being said, let's continue our climb to 35,000 feet. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have now successfully reached our cruising altitude of 35,000 feet. As you can see, the aircraft will now arrest its climb and will maintain this altitude until we reach our top of descent point, following which we will begin our descent towards Los Angeles. At this point, you will also notice on the upper display unit that the speed bugs read CRZ, which stands for cruise, which means that the N1 speed of our engines are being dictated by the cruise mode that was calculated by the onboard flight management computers. Additionally, the speed mode on the FMA on this PFD right here will now read FMC speed instead of N1, thereby highlighting that the aircraft is trying to maintain the specific speed programmed into the FMC for the cruise portion of this flight. I must also mention at this point that the cruise phase of flight is probably the most relaxed phase of flight. During this time, pilots would normally converse among themselves and check the fuel burn and estimated time on route calculations provided by the aircraft against their originally filed operational flight plan. Additionally, in real life, pilots would keep tuning different air traffic control frequencies as they move across different sectors and centers. However, since we're flying without ATC today, simply sit in the flight deck and enjoy the views. Also, it is at this time during long flights when us flight simmers can actually get off our seats and do some other work, household chores and other such things during this phase of flight, as it is even more uneventful in a sim environment than it is in real life. With all that said, that concludes the climb and cruise phase of flight. Alright ladies and gentlemen, with that we have successfully finished climbing to our cruising altitude. In the next episode, we'll be taking a look at the descent and approach portion of our full flight from San Francisco to Los Angeles. Just like the previous episode, I'll be keeping this conclusion short, as I want the transition from this episode to the next to be as seamless as possible. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to perform a full stop landing at the like button and the subscribe button, and press the bell icon for future notifications from this channel. Also, be sure to fly by the comment section and let me know if there's any questions you'd like me to answer for you. As usual, thanks for flying by.